Hi, everybody. Can you believe it? It's been four years, four years of IC Topic Chats. It was May 2020. We were all um, wearing masks and trying to figure out how to connect with one another. And we were all anxious. There's a lot of anxiety in the air back then. What are we going to do? How are we going to keep our practices? Is, there, is the, the federal government going to implode on itself? Who knows? And so um, back in that day, we were one of several groups that uh, started kind of from a groundswell of just need to connect that started up. Um, Ann Price likes to talk about, and she still has her office hours. And so if you get a chance, if you're brand new um, to independent consulting and you want somebody to just be honest with you and, and be able to ask you know, the frank questions you're afraid to, that's a smaller group. So, but she's still doing that a um, couple times a month. Look for that. But we started at the same time. Um, and Ann, and uh, it was a great supporter. She couldn't make it today. And so if you're watching this, Ann, hello. Um, but Susan Wolf and Kurt Stuke and Jesse Metcalf were also pretty much there at the beginning. Anybody else who's with us today who was there at the beginning, raise your hand. I know a lot of you joined us shortly thereafter. Jason, I know you were there in, the, in 2020, um, looking around at some people. Hey, Karen, nice to see you. Um, uh, anyhow, <clears throat> so this group, started in, in that uh, May 2020 and somehow whatever we did continues to keep going on today. I put in the chat and I'll do it again just for the fun of it, four questions that I threw out to our panelists. And so what we're gonna do today is kind of answer these questions in a very organic manner. We'll go between our three panelists of Kurt, Susan and Jesse and see where we go. And after a while, uh, we will stop the recording, say goodbye to all of our folks in the, um, in the uh, Zoom, um, in the YouTube world, and we'll just open it up to everybody who wants to talk about this. So I appreciate you guys coming and well, continuing to show up week after week for reasons I'm not entirely sure, but I certainly enjoy it because uh, it's been a great thing for me to continue to think about who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing with my Goshen Consulting practice. So the four questions, and we'll start it with the first one, and we'll just see where it goes. Um, Susan, Kurt, Jesse, what were some of your favorite and or most memorable chats? Susan's unmiked, un unmuted, so go ahead. Actually, I don't remember anything specific that stood out, which is really weird. It's been so many years and so many chats that it's hard to identify a single one. I think I, I gleaned something out of each one. Kurt, Jessica, either of you have anything favorite? Yeah, I have the same problem. When somebody goes, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite song? It's like, well, it depends on my mood. It depends. I've ever heard that's the lawyer statement. And it's like, it depends. But it, overall, I think it's the financing part. And how do you convey the finances to your prospective clients? You know, some of those NSF fundings like SDEM, there's such a little pool available for the the evaluator. It's really that negotiation between us and the client that um, I picked up things here and just things I really should just say and make sure I include in there and like high risk projects, putting in a little more buffer on a high risk project than something that you know is straightforward. Kind of thing. So finances and dealing with potential clients, it's what I've learned most here. So I could get a little, little more specific, and I think it's, it's funny to think about, you know, favorite chats because I think that there are some that are my favorites because they were so much fun. There are some that were my favorites because I learned so much, and I think the one that comes to mind that really combined those two things was Becky Garrow's presentation, the rapid fire um, questions. I loved that topic chat and I definitely thought it was a memorable one. I was um, on the road during that one. So I was listening and yeah, shout out to Becky. Definitely a favorite because I feel like I learned so much and it was fun. You know, I was, you know, laughing and learning and it was wonderful um, for my drive. And I also feel like that topic chat made me think about, gosh, Becky, you must be so much fun on your bicycle tours. And I wish I lived nearby so I could take your bike tours because I feel like the vibe was just very much like, you know, Becky knows how to MC and, and host and lead you through your journey. So I thought that was a really fun one that was both packed with tons of cool information and really, you know, fun and engaging. And what also was cool was like, 
folks clearly were very responsive when Becky put out a call like, hey, what do you want to hear about? You know, there was a long list of stuff that we went through um, in that in that hour. So it felt like a really neat one where folks were really engaging and, you know, sharing what they needed and what they wanted to learn about. And yeah, I was cracking up during my whole drive enjoying that chat. So <laughs> that's one that comes to mind. But they have all but there's no bad weeks, right? I never come to these chats and think, oh, I could have used that hour better. I'm always glad I came. Yeah, uh, Becky's, that was definitely one of my favorites uh, last year and we liked it so much. And I think she enjoyed doing it so much. Becky, you're welcome to come off. If you want to, you can wait, it's your call. But we definitely are gonna have her back this year sometime in November or December. I don't know if, do we, I don't think we hammered it down. Um, you know, one of the sessions that was, most memorable i'm not sure if it was the best but it was the last year we did two sessions on what to do when things go wrong and um we had a colleague who had passed away and she had a consulting firm and a lot of us immediately went had a holy crap moment and um we had uh the the people who took over those firms talk about what it was like to take over those firms and try and help us coach. I'm getting chills just talking about it because I still get, so it was such a weird and important and like complicated thing to do. And it was like, probably to me, one of the, one of the most kind of emotional sessions we've ever had, but uh, because, but we didn't record it by the way, on purpose, because it was just such, it was so charged, but uh, just to talk about what it means to, to when the leader of your firm dies and what you do after that happens and how those people reacted and what we should think about with that. That was just so powerful. Um, yeah, I feel almost, I feel emotional about it right now. I don't know how anybody follows that. So we should probably just go on to the next question. <laughs> um, what's something that um, any of you guys learned that made a difference to your practice and I mean, Kurt, you're an interesting, you, your, your practice, like mine, we were kind of like one person operations kind of in, I don't know where you were in 2020, but I was, I just hired Tom and we were just, we were only one year into working with an employee and now we've got 15. We're a bit of a different organization. You've learned a lot and done a lot yeah. over these my, four years too. My first employee, excuse me, was 2019. So um, I moved from the sole proprietor with consultants to actually having employees at that point. And um, we've grown quite a bit, but I think in terms of looking at pricing and the finance part of it, um, I would really like to say that I've learned from the marketing part, but I still don't do marketing well at all. So I can't say that I've learned, I've attended, I've listened, and I still don't do it well. All my work is referrals. So while I should have been listening and learning from marketing, I haven't. Um, but it's really the financial aspects and it's just, you know, looking ahead, projecting, especially when we've got some growth, um, it's kind of like stair steps for our company. Um, and we're in one of those big steps right now. And it's really the shifting. And Matt, I think you were one that said, as you grew, you did less technical work and more management work. And I really the phrase is working on the business versus in the business. And I've had to, do, it's, it was a, it's kind of what I wanted to do, but yeah, it's what I had I'm, to do too. I'm struggling with that because I really like the technical aspects. Um, we've got a couple of projects that are just a lot of fun and learning and really engaged in all. And I just don't have the time for all of them. And so that's where I'm learning is that growth of the business. That's what this community has contributed to me. Yeah, it's certainly certainly complicated to figure out where you, how you represent yourself on particularly new projects and who, how you want to be engaged with those, you know, it's struggles. Susan, Jesse, what were some things that you took away from the different sessions? I took away knowledge of my value. Um, like Nina Sabari talked about that level of effort calculation and gain that understanding. I think I got much more comfortable with being able to charge what I'm worth and hold that line and not thinking, well, I'm lucky if I get work or something. So maybe I should 
but I've learned to hold the line on how much I'm charging people. I've learned a lot about marketing. And I think that was helpful too. It's like, how do I get the word out there? Um, that's been super helpful to me. And just, um, you know, I don't know, there's been nuggets like people sharing, how do you make a decision about whether to even go after a project? And um, I'm trying to remember who did that one. Anybody? It's slipping my brain. With that little um, decision thing or checklist or something. Oh, you're talking about Kathleen, Kathleen Sullivan. Yeah. Yes, Kathleen Sullivan. I, for some reason, her name blank. That's what happens when you get old, though. Um, you have these little brain farts. But anyways, um, yeah, so that was really helpful, you know, all the information. So there's just been, a, it's like there's been a nugget from everything. There's, I always walk away with at least a nugget, you know, um, and I think overall what I've learned is that everybody, even the people who haven't even started yet, has something valuable to share. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that there's a lot of, you know, specific, tangible things that I've learned that have really helped me, you know, move my business in the right direction, whether it's, you know, learning about transitioning to S-Corp tax status or figuring out, you know, different business structures. I know I, I learned about being an LLC tax as an S-Corp from Kurt, and we've talked about those things, you know, fairly recently in the chat. So I've learned a lot of things on the business end of, you know, how do I run a business effectively? I know many of us um, did not go to business school, right? We didn't, don't necessarily have a background um, educationally that prepared us for entrepreneurship, but we've got, you know, all the tools and, and all of um, our peers to learn from. And that's been really, really valuable um, as background for anyone who doesn't know me. I did not have a business when these chats started in 2020. I was really at that, you know, thinking about it, teetering um, phase. Uh, so I was still working in academia when these chats started. And I think what I'll say um, in terms of something I learned that's a little less tangible, um, not necessarily a factoid that, um, you know, informed my business, but I was, you know, contemplating transitioning into independent evaluation consulting and meeting you all was um, pretty critical in that process for me. Having models of folks who are in this field, who have been successful, who are not, you know, giant behemoth consulting firms, but really started as, you know, sole proprietors and built up from there has been, I can't even express um, how valuable it's been to have you all as role models and mentors and, you know, uh, folks who kind of nudged me off that cliff, I don't think I would have made the leap um, without sort of the social support that this group provides. So part of what I've learned is like, what does it look like to be a successful independent evaluation consultant? Where am I hoping to go in five years or 10 years with my business? Um, and I really didn't have those models um, in my, my previous role in academia. I just didn't really know wonderful folks like you all. And I think that I've probably would not have quit my full-time job without that example that you all provided and without that social support and folks saying like, come on in, the water's fine. Um, this is actually a pretty great place to be and, and a wonderful career to have. So I'm going to try not to wax poetic too much about the fact that I like wouldn't even have a business without this group, honestly and truly. Well, that's pretty amazing. Um, and you were at the University of Illinois and so uh, you were in my backyard and you just said, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go out to Vermont. So you followed your dreams with your husband. And I think that's awesome. Um, the next, and you started to go into the next question. Such, I don't know why I wrote these questions. They're kind of almost embarrassing that I wrote them. This isn't, I wrote the question is this completely organically developed community of practice? What does this community of practice mean to you? And you kind of answered that. And in the chat, we have somebody who wrote, being a part of this group has felt very legitimizing to me reaffirming this is a legit career path and there's an inspiring community of folks across the country doing similar work so thanks for that i'm not going to give your name because we're on the youtubes and you didn't but the point you know who you are the um here's a funny story i think it's funny anyway i used to be a part of this running club in chicago actually it was more of a drinking club with a running problem um and so we spent a lot of time 
kind of hanging out and we get together on Saturday mornings. And these were just like average middle, th- we were all in our twenties and thirties, average guys. I mean, they were just, and they were in many ways by hanging out with them, I realized kind of how average they really were, but most of them had PhDs, I, which was kind of a random thing. And I remember thinking, if this guy can get a PhD, I could get a PhD. And so it kind of like humanized it for me. And so when a lot of changes happened in my life um, around jobs and things like that, um, and I was kind of in, at a crossroads, I was like, the PhD thing to, to me didn't feel too difficult. I was at a point in time where I didn't have children, wasn't married yet um, on, the, on the road to that. And uh, I thought, well, this is something I could pursue. And so that's, that, that felt, it felt legitimizing. And I think we're doing the same thing here. Uh, hopefully we're not as kind of <laughs> normal as a, in quote marks as those guys. We were all pretty um, inappropriate most of the time. Um, but the thing is, is we try and as this group, we're just people, human beings trying to just get by in life. And we, we share our stories in the chats, try and make it, make it, you know, real for others and kind of show that this is a, a process that if you head down this path, there's support there and it's a doable thing. I know that's one of the things I liked about Gail Barrington's first workshop that I went to, just listening her, to her talk and being around other people who we're making a go of it and it seemed like hey this is something i can do i can make it happen anyway that's my that's my answer to the question in general but also you know it's just been a a real pleasure for me to be a just a part of this group and kind of convening the convener of this whole group and everything like that kurt susan what's the whole community you don't have to talk about the chat community you can talk even more broadly about the independent consulting community if you'd like or answer this question however you like Susan, go for it. Well, there's a lot I could say about that. Um, and Susan, you've been, my, you've been with the IC TIG for how long? Like a, a number of years. I think it was since 2007 or eight, maybe, when I f- attended my first AEA um, conference. I was working in a really competitive environment. And as someone who suffers, believe it or not, a lot from social anxiety, Um, it was hard for me. I I was never, you know, it was just a really difficult place for me to be. And I go to this conference and I'm meeting these people who are consulting and they're like hugging me, you know, like, oh, you know, welcome, welcome. And um, it was so odd. They were people that were like, come and be a consultant. We'll help you get started. I mean, these are people that would be my competitors in the business, but here they were like, just, offering advice and helping and having breakfast with me. And I, it was just, just really felt healthy to me to be in an environment where people care, they support one another, they try, they lift one another instead of trying to backbite one another. And that culture is what drew me in. And it's still there, you know, it's like, here we are sitting on this call with a bunch of people who we might compete against for jobs, And yet we're more than happy to help and lift one another anyways, because we recognize that we're all in this together. And for me, it just, that's that I left my job and I left those competitive environments and started this because even though we compete, it's not that kind of competitive nastiness. There's a, a, like I've had people beat me out for jobs and it's, I think Kurt beat me on one and it was like, yeah, Kurt, you are the better evaluator for that job. You, you know? Would you like that one back? No, um. <laughs> not a chance. Not if it's causing you a problem, but no, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I was, you know, it's like, yeah, Kurt's that's Kurt's area. Kurt's of course they would pick Kurt over me and you, and you, I was okay with it. You know, it's like, it's going to happen to us. We're going to beat each other out for jobs we want. And um, I've also at the same time met a lot of collaborators. I met Ann Price through AEA and she's like my business bestie now. We have joint um, business retreats together and do something, do a lot of work together and training and lots of things. Where did you go Uh, on your retreat together, Susan? And how did that occur? (laughs) Okay, she got the Taos verbo that you wanted, Matt. I know, I heard about that. 
<laughs> yes, we wrote the book together and beat Matt out for this Verbo in New Mexico. And uh, we decided, she's like, hey, let's go on our retreat together here. And I can see why you were disappointed, Matt, because it really was a lovely place. And we, but we did get a lot done in terms of planning our next books and endeavors together. So um, yes, we're not done um, with 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 our uh, joint endeavors. So um, yeah, so I think to me this community has meant a lot because it was a good space for me to walk into, feel supported, feel um, and and I think just it's just a healthier space. I don't know what to other people, Jessica, Kurt. <laughs> For me, in in many of our evaluations that we do, we ask about the people's sense of belonging and how much it's grown. Like if they're in a scholarship program as an undergrad in a STEM degree, how much do they feel like they belong in the project, in the department, in career, you know, that kind of thing. So this group I, is the one that I've got the strongest sense of belonging in. I am in other professional organizations. I'm in other TIGs within AEA. And there's just nothing like this one where it's the community and I feel just a part of this community. And and for those that, you know, I've been run with, I've tapped some on the shoulder and it's just like, it's really comfortable to be able to do that, to be able to reach out to other people. And um, I've even tried to recreate this in San Antonio and it's just not the same. Just Just can't do it. Can't get the momentum going and getting any kind of consistent meetings of of people, whether in person or virtual, just it's not working. So there's something neat, something organic, something different about this community. And I can't explain it yet. Yeah, when I do, I'll let you know. Here's something that's funny. Um, in fact, I think it's completely hilarious because I think this is a great group that meets regularly and somehow we've created momentum and y'all keep showing up so that's it so you hear that y'all come out of me i grew up in tech, houston texas by the way occasionally it slips out plus i was talking to some people from kentucky today and they were using y'all so you know anyhow um but we put in a proposal and advocated for a big conference room last year for aea so we could talk about this in a round table and no one showed up it was like just jesse and kurt susan were you part of that too i think you were Ann. and uh we had like two people who weren't the presenters show up and i was like i just kind of laughed at the whole thing it was it, i was just hilarious because i was like I, I how does how do these things happen i don't even understand we just kind of like keep moving forward i guess it's just like anything with our consulting practice it's important to just keep showing up and uh, things come together. Um, anyway, uh, one of the things I want to get to with you all, and then I, I definitely want to have any, let, we'll stop the recording and let anybody jump in here today and uh, talk about any of this. But one thing I do want to know, because I'm, I'm constantly thinking about this, like how do we keep this going? What do we do next? What's the next, what's the next four years look like for us? And um, curious what you guys think should we continue with exactly the same format or is there some tweaks that you think makes sense or should we be doing one a couple of things that kind of changed over the years one was we started a, a because i didn't i needed material i didn't know what to do so i started um a monthly to, uh core topic which is a topic that everybody seems to want to talk about all the time so we have 12 of those and we repeat those every year and so oftentimes we, so next week even is a topic on business planning, um, the business plan. And so we do, we've done that for three years in a row, the, pretty much the same, it, it's updated, but it's more or less the same kind of ideas. Um, and then the other thing we did recently is we started quarterly firm topics for people who want to go from like a one person operation to a multiple person operation. But what, are, what do you guys think? What should we be doing going forward? Or maybe we should just, I probably don't want to shut it all down. I think this, we've got momentum here, but what do you think? What, what should we, we be doing? Susan, you're on mic, so you get to go. You're on, you've got a hot mic. Big fan of building the bench. 
I think it's time for us to continue to build the bench for many of the new people coming in to be able to step up and maybe start leading because as they get in here and get more comfortable, I think if we're going to change any formats or anything like that, it's it, it's going to happen organically by some new person comes in and has this like idea where we go, oh my God, you know, yeah. So I think just continuing to bring in new people to talk. Um, so everybody think about all of you have something to share. So all of you think about what might you share with us because we go beyond, we go to what people talking about books, we could have a, a, um, regular, you know, quarterly book presentation. Um, we have people just talk about personal things, like how do we handle stress and potential trauma from some of the things we see in our evaluations? Uh, we have business focused things. Um, but honestly, I think it's more about just having new people talk and new people join in and feel comfortable. This is everybody's space. So if everybody who has an idea, it's your space too. And those ideas are welcome. You're not being, you know, you're not, um, what is it, being rude or something. If you email Matt or me or Ann or anybody and say, you know, I really think those IC TIG chats ought to do this. Okay. And don't be afraid, you know, to, to step forth, even if it's a weird idea. Some of the best ideas came from something weird and unworkable. And yet that weird, unworkable thing makes somebody go, oh, and, and that's also liberating structure activities. Oh, that's a good idea. We could even do a sort of a focused um, discussion on what are some things Oh, you're coming up with great ideas. See, group. Kelly's got the next. Right. Kelly, we've got all of August, just about every every week in August, or every session in August is available right now. So, there's this is a really low bar <laughs> to to present presentation. If you're interested in presenting with the IC topic chats, um, I'm often it, usually mm -hmm. the topics come up organically just through our conversations, like they are right here with Kelly, uh, and then I I reach out and say, hey, you should do a session. I got a spot open on next date available. And so um, that's one of the things I love about these because I don't, I don't know if you guys recently went through and did any of the abstract reviews for AEA and, I, and it just, it, I, there's something like disconnected in the whole process and then to get through and then you finally get accepted and then you go to the, the conference and you go, I don't know what I want to go to. Like, I don't get excited about it personally, but maybe that's just me. Some things I get really excited about, but there's a lot of times I go to a session and go this, I get more, this, I'm speaking for myself here. I get more out of these sessions than I do out of going to the conference. So I'm just, that's just me saying that. That's the honest truth. And I think it's because there's not so much formality and so much, so many barriers to the point of getting to the point of having a conversation about what you want to talk about. And I think that's what it is. And we have, and we meet more frequently. That's, that's why I like about the IC topic chats. And I, and uh, you know, so frankly, we're not all trying to be smart academics all buttoned up and looking so professional. I think part of what's great about this is kind of the honesty and the, just the ability to be um, fragile in front of people. And then frankly, we learn more through that process than being buttoned up and professional with all our citations at a conference. Okay, went down a wholly different path. Sorry about that. I want to give Jesse and Kurt an opportunity to talk about where we should go with all this whole this whole topic chat thing we've got we've been doing for four years. Jesse, go ahead. <laughs> Wasn't sure because I saw you on mute. Um, I mean, I definitely agree with what Susan mentioned that the more we can kind of bring our newer folks in to, you know, not only participate actively, but share, you know, what they know. And and um, I think, you know, as, as we've been kind of saying, no topic is off limits, right? There's so many ways that we can learn from each other. And I think the fact that we all come from, you know, such a varied, you know, backgrounds and, and um, topical areas is, is really valuable. And 
Um, I think that, you know, the more we can do to have, you know, new presenters feel really comfortable, you know, jumping in. Um, I love Kelly's idea about using some liberating structures activities. You know, I think generally there's a lot of things that are going well. I love the consistency. Um, I love that this is just part of my, you know, Thursday lunchtime routine. Um, and I think that the the structure we have where, you know, we present and then we discuss is also really nice. It, it allows folks to, you know, spend some time absorbing and being a sponge and then spend some time engaging. So I think there's a lot of things that are going really well. And um, I think there's plenty, plenty that we don't need to change. And, and maybe maybe the greater focus is, you know, trying to do what we can to bring in, you know, new topics and new folks and and making sure that that everyone who is um, joining in the group feels, you know, really comfortable um, putting themselves out here. I think just like has been said, it's a really nice, you know, low stakes setting to, you know, share some knowledge, um, do a presentation. Uh, yeah, so I think that that sounds like the way to go, just continuing on with, um, you know, continuing to expand our, our group and the topics we talk about. So about two years ago, Jesse, you and another one of our colleagues shared your experience of becoming, going from nothing to a solo practice. And um, I think recently we had another, another group like that. I thought it was really cool. Uh, those are some of my favorite sessions because I'm always thinking about what's it like, because I, I, it's, it's, I, I'm getting further and further away from the, the lurker to starting an, uh, a, a consulting practice. But those are some, some of the neat ones when we get a chance to hear people who've done it. They made the leap. They, they took the first step. And uh, here they are. They survived. They're still alive. And they're still, and they're, most of the time, they're thriving. So anyway, I do want to encourage folks who are to continue to do that. We'll continue to find the people who recently started and bring them on. We can do that as a yearly session. I want to try and do that because I think that's just really encouraging. Um, Sherilyn Corsak's here with us today. She's up. Um, she was one of our, and, and Jillian, oh, Jillian Marshall's there here too. You guys were those, those two people who presented a couple months ago and one of our really successful sessions. A lot of people attended that and a lot of people signed up to get the video and they didn't, they may not have come, but it was very, one of our very well registered for that. Um, uh, Kurt, go ahead. Um, I'll keep this short. I really like this format where we present for 20 to 30 minutes and then let everybody talk. Um, so now that we've talked for 41 minutes and <laughs> yeah, haven't given as much time, but I, I do like that format of having an idea where we can present on and then listen to other people. So with that, I'll stop. So we can listen to other people. Yeah, I think we probably need to take our own advice and um, stop talking. <laughs> so the record, I don't know where the little button went to make this thing stop recording. Um, but anyway, with that, I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's take it off and uh, say goodbye to all the YouTube folks. And uh, we'll open it up to the rest of their group. But goodbye, YouTube folks. Everybody else stick around.